The end of Thor Love and Thunder is a lot to process. The ending itself, and then two incredible post credit scenes. And I have videos explaining all three things in depth. And right now, we're gonna talk about post credit scene two, featuring Jane Foster, the return of Heimdall, and Valhalla. Wow, wow, wow. And if you're just excited about Heimdall and Valhalla, well, then you don't know a lot about Jane Foster and what happens to that character in the comics, because I think that's very exciting as well. And I'm going to explain it all to you right now. So according to Norse mythology, when you die, you go to one of the nine realms, Hel, with one L, ruled by Hela. That's where she was in that flashback in Thor Ragnarok where she struck down all the Valkyries. And on that note, if you die in battle, like the Valkyries did, you go to Valhalla, one big party, or as it seems to be depicted at the end of Thor Love and Thunder, a Norse wellness retreat, which maybe is having a party. Also, where Jane appears when she first materializes, it looked all, to me almost exactly like the bridge into Asgard from Thor Ragnarok. So that was destroyed, of course. That's why they have new Asgard. But it made me wonder, maybe it just looks that way in Valhalla, so if you're, if you're homesick, but maybe it's in the same place but on another plane. I thought that was interesting. They use the same render files, basically. They're like, oh, bring it up on the back, on the green screen. Anyway, this end credit scene sets up two very interesting storylines going forward, which might be intertwined. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the potential of a Disney Plus show. So I would watch it, I think it sounds great. So the next chapter for Jane Foster herself, but it also establishes that nobody really dies in the Thor corner of the MCU, especially if they die in battle. What a loophole! Heimdall is in Valhalla. The Valkyrie are probably in Valhalla. Odin is there, I bet, even though he didn't die in battle. Does arguing with your sons count? But you know, Valhalla is supposed to be ruled by Odin, so he likely has a get in free card. And then also, what about Freya? You know, does she get in because she's, you know, Odin's wife? You know, Thor never looked for his mom, and he never looked for his dad. I get, you know, I think you can, a god can only get into, um, I'll be curious if you can visit Valhalla. Sometimes they do in the comics. And I, as I said in my video about Thor's daughter, she potentially could maybe, you know, be a bridge to that. So it's very interesting. There's a lot to explore here. Uh, and then, but also I want to point out that in Norse mythology, sometimes Freya has her own version of heaven. So maybe that's where she is. Sif's arm is probably there, as Thor pointed out in this movie. And Loki, it looks like Loki didn't have to feel so bad, you know, it seems, when they showed him that TVA clip reel, because he'd certainly have gone to Valhalla taking on Thanos. In fact, I wonder if there's a version of him in, in Valhalla, because, you know, remember that the Loki in the Loki series, the TVA, that variant, is from, you know, the Avengers uh, storyline. You know, he, he grabs the, uh, the space stone and he teleports out. So, you know, the one who dies did die. And is he in Valhalla? And, you know, and he has not been, you know, he has not become a better person. So that's very interesting. We've already introduced that there are plenty of Lokis running around the MCU. So it's a possibility. And, and now it gets really interesting. I wonder if anyone who dies fighting beside Thor qualifies for Valhalla. I mean, sometimes only gods can get into Valhalla. And, you know, Jane Foster, I guess, qualifies because she did wheel, briefly wield Mjolnir and was a variation of Thor. They never really made that clear, though, I felt, uh, especially because there were two Thors at once. Uh, but anyway, because in the comics, it was there can only be one Thor at a time. And Jane so famously says there, can, there, there, there must always be a Thor. But anyway, what if sometimes, you know, so sometimes anyone who dies in battle goes to Valhalla. It's for anyone, any soldier. So what about Tony Stark, right? I think, I think it's a long shot. In the comics, he comes back as artificial intelligence, which we've already discussed a lot, and is very on brand for Tony Stark. But I like the idea. He might be chilling in Valhalla. I really like that a lot. I think that could be a great twist. He could still do the AI bit, too. Anyway, Heimdall has left behind a son, who in Thor Love and Thunder is clearly on his way to becoming a great warrior himself, just like his pops, and has inherited his father's all-seeing eyes. In the comics, by the way, Heimdall's gift is passed on to another when he dies. He doesn't retain it. Uh, and he gives his gift to Sif, who is his sister in the comics, uh, who takes over his job as guardian of the Bifrost. There's really no guardian of the Bifrost anymore, because I think Idris Elba didn't want to stand there. <laughs> Uh, but back to MCU uh, Heimdall, I see a reunion with his son in the future. And, you know, 
You don't keep Idris Elba on the bench. I'm very encouraged that they might actually finally do something good with Heimdall. They've been trying, but they just haven't done anything. But him co-starring in a Disney Plus series with Natalie Portman sounds pretty good to me. I mean, I don't know. They could cr try and cram this all into Thor 5, but there's so much that they've just, uh, they've just uh, opened a door to here. It's exciting. It sounds to me like it deserves six episodes that are only medium until the last two, and then it's amazing. <laughs> So let's talk Jane Foster. Now in the movie, when she dies in Thor's arms, Mjolnir no longer able to hold back her cancer, she disappears Odin style in the gold dust and rematerializes in Valhalla as Jane Foster, not the mighty Thor. Very important distinction. Like that being the mighty Thor is what I would, you would think would qualify her for Valhalla, yet she she rematerializes in her human form. Hmm. Now, I think, you know, Thor, of course, has taken Mjolnir back after Jane's death. And in the comics, sure enough, Jane Foster wasn't Thor for very long. Actually, you know, about a year or so. It was, it was pretty long. But yes, Thor eventually was worthy again in the comics. You know, that was a different storyline, different circumstances. But Jane Foster, because she had gained more popularity with everyone who read her, her Mighty Thor uh, comic book, uh, you know, story. They turned her into Valkyrie, right? Now, can she be Valkyrie in the MCU? We've already got a Valkyrie. That's Tessa Thompson. But actually, her character is named Brunhilde, and she simply is a Valkyrie. So Jane Foster could become one too, and they could go back to referring Tessa, to Tessa Thompson as Brunhilde. I think there's some foreshadowing to that with Brunhilde and Jane becoming fast friends in Thor Love and Thunder, with Brunhilde even saying that Jane makes her feel like she has her Valkyrie sisters back. And in the comics, Jane Foster's Valkyrie title, which I pick up periodically, sometimes it's pretty good, but in that comic, one of the characters is a Valkyrie who's drawn to look an awful lot like Tessa Thompson and I believe is called Brunhilde. And she acts just like the character as well. So I think, you know, I see a very clear path forward here. Now, Jane is Valkyrie, has a lot of cool powers and accoutrement. She wields the all weapon, which can become any weapon she can think of. It's like this glowing gold energy, but it also can give her uh, glowing gold wings, which looks pretty awesome. But there's even more. She also has something called death perception. Get it? It's a take on depth perception. Very clever. But death perception is that, you know, remember that Valkyries escort fallen heroes to Valhalla, as recently depicted in the Northmen even? Well, Jane, in the comics, can see how and when a person will die just by looking at them. In fact, she can see their whole life. And it's kind of depressing, but they've actually found some very interesting ways to use it. I recently just read a story where Jane could tell where a bomber was because suddenly everyone in the area she was in had their deaths moved up to imminent as he entered the same area. So that was a very interesting way to find someone. Also, she could tell, it was a, it was a robot, an android, so she could also tell who didn't have a soul. Uh, in that same story, she also, though, saw a regular human woman pass away when they were, you know, they were scouring the crowd, and that was a woman who had Norwegian ancestry. So she, when she passed away, her spirit could see Jane as Valkyrie, and Jane escorted her to the afterlife, and that's something that, you know, Jane Foster could end up doing in the MCU, which, again, could be kind of depressing, but it's a way to go with the character. And then get this, she not only has a flying horse, but one who can talk! I mean, uh, Tessa Thompson's got a flying horse in the MCU, but it doesn't talk. This all sounds very good to me. I think it's excellent. And I also think that Jane Foster's empathy as Valkyrie, this take on the character, I think is a much better fit with Natalie Portman's abilities as an actor. And she just did not make for a very good Mighty Thor. But I think, you know, it's interesting. I think that uh, the Mighty Thor, Jane Foster's Thor, was more compelling on the page than Valkyrie is. But I think that I see great potential for Natalie Portman in that role. So how does this sound to you? I actually think this sounds, as I said, like a great potential Disney Plus show. Or again, they could try to cram it into Thor 5 with Thor versus Hercules. The Greeks do have their own under underworld as well. So what do you think of these developments? Do you read the Valkyrie comic? What do you think of it? Share your, and also what do you think of the potential of Valhalla? Who do you think sitting up there? Sipping mead uh, or chugging mead. It's, it's Valhalla, they can do whatever they want. So share your thoughts down. Do you think Tony Stark could be in there? Oh man, I think that would be kind of cool. All right, share your thoughts today. Uh, share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.